Let us now have a closer look at the Excel worksheet area. The Excel worksheet area consists of various rows, different kinds of columns, and the intersection point between the row and the column is known as a cell. Each cell can consist of different kinds of data. The data can be a numerical data or a text data. Some regular type of data which can be inputted in the cell can be found by right clicking and clicking on the format cell. You will find these are some of the general cell types. You can also input date and time, percentage, fraction, scientific. To an extent you can also customize the cell data. We will discuss all these in very much detail later uh, but you must understand that a cell can contain different kinds of data. That data can be text, numbered, currency, accounting, date, time etc. Okay. Each cell has a name. Let's say for example this cell, cell number B2. This name is can be seen here. How do we identify that this is a cell B2? As you can see it's highlighted. Highlighted one is B here and the highlighted one is 2 here. So you can clearly understand that you are at cell B2. Say for example let me click here. The highlighted one is E and 7. The cell number would be E7 which is visible here. Let's say if I want to go to a particular cell. Say for example if I want to go directly to cell A55. There's a shortcut by which you can do it. You can press F5 which is available on the top of your F functions. Just press F5 and type the cell number which you want to navigate. So you will be directly taken to this cell where you really want to go. So this is the utility of a go to function. This is called as a go to function. And the shortcut you need to remember is F5. Just press F5, the dialog button will open and you need to type whichever cell you want to go and you can press OK and you will be taken to that cell. Now there are various kinds of regular shortcuts which you must know. One is how to navigate from left to right. Let's say if I want to navigate from left to right like this, how will I do that? The shortcut here is to use the arrow key. You, you must use the arrow key which helps you to go from top to bottom, bottom to left, left to right. Just press the right key and you will be taken on the right. You can also use the shift key to take one step on the right hand side. So this is what you can do if you want to go or navigate on the right hand side. Let's say if you want to navigate on the left hand side you can simply press the left arrow button and it will take you to the left side of the column. You can also use another shortcut which is shift plus tab. So let's say if you're pressing shift plus tab which I am doing right now, you will be taken to the one which is on the immediate left. So this is what you can do in order to navigate the worksheet area. There are other you know, shortcuts which may be important. One frequently used would be to use Control plus Home. Control plus Home means you're pressing Home and you're pressing Control. So let's see what happens when I do that. Control and Home. You can see I am now taken to the cell A1. So this means that I'll be taken to the top of the worksheet. So this takes me to the top of the worksheet by using this shortcut. And then there are some navigation shortcuts which are really useful. Uh, these would be a page down or a page up. Let me do a page down and see what happens. A page down means there's a clear change in the frame of the worksheet. I've been taken one frame down in the Excel area. Likewise, let me do a page up one frame up. So I can do page down in order to navigate from top to bottom and page up, page down and page up. So to navigate from top to bottom and bottom to up. You may have kind of... Now let me ask you a quick question. 
how many number of cells are in sheet 1 in order to calculate let's say if this was the question how many number of cells are there in sheet 1 what do we require we require the number of rows we require the number of columns and we may have to multiply the rows with the columns in order to find the number of cells right so the approach is simple count the number of rows count the number of columns and multiply both of them to find the total number of cells in sheet 1 so the number of rows as we navigate down we find that they are approximately 1 million now 1.048 Five seven six million. So let me write that down. One zero four eight five seven six. That is the total number of rows. In order to calculate the number of columns, let's navigate on the right hand side. And uh, since this numerical system is based on A, B, C, and the combinations of that, it may be a bit difficult to count that in a second. So I'll give you that number. The total number of columns which is uh, there in a sheet 1 or normally there in any sheet is 16384. This is the total number of columns which are there in any sheet. Now let us quickly multiply and see how many cells are there. With the assumption that I will be explaining you the multiplication and uh, division functions in greater detail later. Let me just prove a point here without explaining how I came to these formulas. I'm doing a, a quick division so as to convert this data into billions and uh, what do we find out is that total number of cells which are there is 17.17987 billion cells in sheet 1. What about sheet 2? Again 17.17 plus cells likewise sheet 3. Can I make more sheets? Yes you can. You can click here and insert more sheets. So you know you can have multiple sheets here. Sheet 1, sheet 2, sheet 3, sheet 4, sheet 5, sheet 6 and you can go on and on and on. Now I'm sure you would be facing a question or you may be having a question that why do we really require so many billion cells in a single sheet? Now I, I guess you know it's a very difficult question to answer. Larger corporates I guess may be utilizing majority of the cell inputs here. However for individual usage or let's say in most uh, corporate usage I have seen that people tend to name the sheet differently rather than utilizing a single sheet altogether. You may be wondering why in the universe we may require more than one sheet when we have more than 17.17987 billion cells. Uh, the answer actually lies in how you want to structure your worksheet, workbook or worksheet. What do I mean by structuring your worksheet is let us imagine that if we have a situation where you want to document the name and email IDs of all staff in the company. Now there are two ways of doing this. One is that you document name and email IDs of all staff in this sheet one itself and there may be thousands and thousands of employees in your company so that will come under a single category or the other approach which may probably be better for some of you would be that you can have different sheets for different departments maybe a different sheet for HR a different sheet for finance a different sheet for let's say marketing a different sheet for operations and maybe a different sheet for IT and so on and so forth so in this way you will have different sheets here let's say this will be the sheet for HR and another sheet for marketing and you may continue like this in order to make different sheets with name and email IDs of all your staff see the, the better way to while we use Excel we find that you know there are so many functions or commands which we may not know or probably we have gone through those functions earlier but we still don't remember those functions so that situation may come time and again so in that case please remember and uh, please be informed that you can always use help function from the menu command and by typing just F1 from the top 
function buttons. So let us press F1 and understand what happens next. So there's a quick dialog box that opens which is called as Excel help and you can immediately browse all the Excel help topics. Let's say if I may have to really find some help on a topic which is on uh, let's say introduction to Excel, what is data validation or let's say how to use a chart, I can go inside and maybe go through it and read that in detail and understand that in a very efficient way. Other approach could be that you can type the query in the search button here on the top and uh, just press enter. So I'm typing ribbon because we have just learned what is exactly is ribbon and uh, you will find different kinds of help topics associated with ribbon which are there in these articles. So let's say I, I'll press customize uh, the ribbon. In this article you will find how you can go about customizing your ribbon and uh, its specifications here. So please make the most of the Excel help which is there. The shortcut is F1 from the function menu.